It's early morning on Christmas Day, and the vice president flies into his Ekuru home, a 20 minutes flight from his private residence in Yata. The vice president is in Saikuru to celebrate Christmas with his extended family and constituents, his eldest and youngest sons in tow. Kalonzo's grandmother, more than 100 years old, awaits him anxiously. When they arrive, her joy is boundless. <laughs> <laughs> Her joy is boundless and it clearly rubs on him. Here, Kalonzo's position as a senior government official seems to be forgotten, albeit for just a moment. They don't even refer to me as Mweshmiwa. They call me Kalonzo, some other is Kalonzo, and my mother is called me Kalonzo. And this is it, this is, this is me. Um, so uh, those are the complications you read about in Nairobi, I think, are for Nairobi people. <laughs> this is where the journey of the baby boy who has risen to become Kenya's vice president began. <laughs> On Christmas Eve in 1953, his late mother Sarah Malia Mosioka gave birth to a baby boy. She named him Kalonzo. His father heard of the news on his way home from Mombasa where he worked as a businessman. Nika kutana na kijana moja wa rikalango. Nika muliza bari ya nyumbani. Haka nambia bibi yako, ameza. Oh, nika zikia. Kitu ziyu ino mnagani. Nika ona uyu. Ziyu nili, ziwezi kukwambia nili zikia ye. Lakini ni usuri. Nika muambia ngoja hapo. He says the timing of his son's birth struck him as a sign that Kalonzo was no ordinary child. His father was keen to see him through school at a time and place where schools were few and far in between. Everybody who knows me knows I grew up a, a timid little boy. Uh, my mother gave birth to only two of us, my older sister, who now lives in Perani near Lungalunga border, um, and myself. I went to school ahead of my sister, who is older, because had my father not moved from, Sekur, to, from uh, Kavungu, where I was born, to near the market here, I would never have gone to school. That is how serious this thing was. There are no schools there. And uh, I used to look after goats and sheep without even trousers. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, even in a shot, uh, just <laughs> looking after goats. So would you imagine a character like that would uh, today be what you are saying? A storia ya kutaka tome ni kupikiria atakuwa chivu. Chivu wakatu ndi walikuwa mutubukubwa. Kalonzo did not become a chief, but exceeded his father's expectations to serve in various senior positions in government, including his current office of vice president. At the age of 32, he became an MP through a by-election, following the demise of the then MP, Philip Manandu. His critics claim he could have done more for his electorate for the quarter century he has represented them in parliament. But there seems to be a different picture on the ground and his Christmas token to the constituents is seemingly well received. People seem to blame weather on me. <laughs> because Sekuru, as I said, is not like a rich which is ever green. You could, cannot grow tea here. And if you look at it, even though the place was worse when we took over leadership, mm -hmm. today, that's why these people have never stopped electing me, by the way. Mm -hmm. If I was doing rubbish, they would have thrown me home a long time. But they know where we come from. Wiper. With over 20 years of experience in politics, Kalonzo was prepared to expand the horizons of his career in the 2007 general election, running for the office of president. He launched his presidential campaign, pitting himself against two fierce rivals, President Mwai Kibaki and Prime Minister Raila Odinga. <laughs> Kalonzo 
Amid a violent crisis over the election results, with the supporters of incumbent President Mwai Kibaki and Raila Odinga disputing the outcome of the poll, Kibaki appointed Kalonzo as vice president in 2008. He accepted the post, saying he was intensely aware that the appointment had come at a difficult time when the nation was going through a painful moment. And with the alliance dubbed KKK seemingly taking shape, it's not lost on his critics again that, with Deputy Premier Uhuru Kenyatta and suspended Higher Education Minister William Ruto under investigation at the International Criminal Court at The Hague, Kalonzo may be positioning himself to take advantage of what appears to be a dicey situation for both Ruto and Uhuru. First of all, there's nothing called KKK. Please get it out of your <laughs> mind. It? I've said it many times. Mm -hmm. There is only one K that I believe in, and that is Kenya. I have never been a, an opportunist. I would hate to be an opportunist. I'm telling you, even their competitors yes. should not celebrate. And how do you celebrate the misfortune of a fellow Kenyan? I find this incredible. To Kalonzo, the ICC process could spring some surprises. The cabinet has already indicated its preference to deal with the ghost of the post-election violence through a local judicial mechanism. But did the decision come a little too late? I've, somebody, I've seen somebody said you can't stop Okambo. He can be stopped in law. While the entire Kenyan leadership is grappling with the issue of the post-election violence and ending impunity, Kalonzo is fighting yet another battle on a personal level, trying to correct what he says are misconceptions about him, such as being referred to as indecisive. I think it's in my training as a lawyer, by the way. You, you must listen to everybody. You really have to listen, and then when you make up your mind, it is born of... You know, having looked at the whole thing, and this is a, a lawyer's training, yeah? But you, 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 you have seen a lot of people whom you think are decisive, but they're saying one thing today and tomorrow they're denying it. I, I don't want to be a denying type, okay? During the referendum campaigns for or against the ratification of a new constitution, he was widely viewed to be openly supporting the green team that endorsed the proposed constitution and secretly supporting the red team that opposed it. I say church, speak. Yes. Speak church. Yes. This is a time for you. Yes. Because you are Kenyans. It's after the speech at the Nairobi Pentecostal Church in Karen that he was ridiculed for apparently giving mixed signals which were translated to mean yes, no, yes. I mean, honestly, you have to listen to all the churches, eh? And listen to, and then and carry them. And you watermelon. Yeah, metal lemon. Now they know I'm not watermelon, I'm Kalonzo. <laughs> <laughs> Back at his farm in Yata, nightfall does not deter the 57-year-old from visiting his cow shed. Here, he says, he finds peace and tranquility, away from the strainer's political arena. And the laughter of his wife, Pauline, and their four children rejuvenates him. <laughs> His youngest child and only daughter, Damari, sat her Kenya Certificate of Primary Education exams this year. She is 14 years old now. Their 24-year-old firstborn, Kennedy, just arrived home from Australia, where he has completed a bachelor's degree in politics and international affairs and expecting to embark on a law degree, seemingly following in his father's footsteps. <laughs> Kevin, the second-born, is also pursuing his studies in international business in Australia. The third-born, Klein, a gifted artist who just turned 18, is in high school at Brookhouse School. Here at home, the vice president is just dad. But a dad with great ambitions, one who intends to go down the pages of history books as one of Kenya's heads of state. The presidential election coming in just about two years may just present him a chance. I have to find a reason, if I'm not running, to tell Kenyans why. I just wanted to have a go at it. Remember President Kibaki tried how many times? Mm -hmm. Raila himself tried several times. Yeah. In other words, 
Kalonzo is warming up to take another shot at the presidency come 2012. But will he be on target or off target? Sylvia Chabet, Citizen Live at 9, Saikuru, Mwenge District.